So I've played through the Halo Infinite campaign and there are a ton of things that I wish I had known before I started that I'm going to share with you guys today. And of course this video will not be containing story spoilers, however you will see some gameplay so if you want to go in completely fresh, I mean obviously don't watch this video. By the way, if you enjoy this, subscribe because we've got a ton more Halo Infinite content coming. Alright, the first thing that I wish I had known before playing Halo Infinite, and this is a huge one, you cannot replay levels. You just can't. There's no way to to replay a level once you finish it. You have to completely restart the campaign. There are a couple of sections that you can return to in the open world, but just generally, once you pass through somewhere, you can't go back. That means if you want to collect the skulls and the audio logs and everything else hidden in those levels, make sure you do it the first time. There's a way to see how many unlockables you've collected and how many still exist in an area. If you're a completionist, either check that or be prepared to do a second run. I really don't get this feature. It's just a terrible idea, but it's how the game works. All right, the second thing I wish I had known before playing Halo Infinite is that some of the weapon variants are really, really good. I'm not going to say which ones. I don't want to spoil it for you, but this is basically how they work. Weapon variants are earned in one of two ways. You can get them either by killing high value targets, basically special banished mini bosses who will drop a weapon. Once you get the weapon the first time, it's then available in perpetuity from any of your forward operating bases. So if you kill an elite who's got a special sword, you can basically access that anytime you want. You will also naturally earn weapon variants through the things you do in the open world. Save a squad of marines, you'll get valor. Valor will unlock a variety of things including new vehicles and weapons and even weapon variants. Some of the variants are power weapons like snipers or whatever else, but other are just modified versions of your basic arsenal, like a different AR. These are things you want to seriously consider bringing along on missions. Not only are many of them great all-purpose weapons, but you can actually refill the ammunition for them without having to get the specific weapon type by visiting one of the ammo pedestals. There are, I think, five types of weapons in the game. Special, legendary weapons, kinetic weapons, electric weapons, plasma weapons, and hard light weapons. You can usually almost completely refill fill a gun by visiting the pedestal of its specific type. So if you've got a special mangler you really like, although you definitely won't be finding copies of it on the battlefield, you can still probably make your way through a specific level with it, especially if you want to save it for a boss. Also, another little hint, when you're attacking the enemy stronghold to secure the weapon in the first place, there's also a version of their weapon just lying around which you can also grab and which may make your job a little bit easier. The third thing I wish I'd known is about equipment management. So in the campaign, you eventually gain access to four types of equipment in this order. You start off with the grappling hook, you then get the threat sensor, next is the drop shield, then finally the thrusters. You swap through your equipment by clicking right on the d-pad and then choosing one of four directions. Grenades are the opposite, you click left in one of the four directions for the four grenade types. Although this seems somewhat complicated, it's really not. All of the equipment has a cooldown. Some of them, like the drop shield, take quite a while to recharge, while others, like the grapple shot, especially when upgraded, recharge nearly instantly. You get infinite uses of the equipment, you just have to wait for it to recharge. What I suggest is that you choose one as sort of your standard equipment. For me, and I think for most people, that will be the grapple shot. Memorize that shortcut, it's pretty easy for the grapple shot. It's right on the d-pad, then right again. Then choose a second equipment and memorize that one. I'm just gonna say right away, I think by far the second most useful piece of equipment is the drop shield. Although the thrusters do have some utility from what I understand when you upgrade them because you actually get a camo after you thrust her. But really, I'm going to suggest the drop shield. This thing is nearly useless in multiplayer, but in campaign, it's perfect. The enemy won't shatter your deployable cover as quickly. You can use it in those situations where you've got your back against a wall and you just need to survive and get your shields back up. It's really just perfect. So memorize the combination for that. Then once you've deployed it, just switch back to your grapple shot. It seems complicated, but it's really not once you get in a good cycle. Alright, the fourth thing that I would want to know is about the save system. First of all, unlike prior Halo games, not only is there no ability to replay levels, you can't even send yourself back to checkpoints. Now, admittedly, that's not a huge deal, you can just grenade yourself, but it is something to know, especially if you're somebody who frequently, well, rage quits during campaign. However, my bigger tip is to be careful, because sometimes exploring into wild places will cause you to get really weird checkpoints. I had one on the second level, where I basically 
basically jumped up on the edge of this forerunner containment thing and I wasn't supposed to be there obviously but I got a checkpoint as it was rotating around this empty pit and I probably would have had to wait about 20 minutes for it to make its full rotation because I was on the far outside and I don't think there was any way around that. On that note I will also say don't quit the game and necessarily expect to be exactly where you were especially if you're in a non-linear section. So if you're in the open world and you found a really cool spot, you might not still be there when you turn your console or your PC back on. All right, so the final thing that I'll say about Halo Infinite's campaign, the last tip that I would have wanted to know is not to stress the open world and don't force yourself into exploring if you don't want to. I beat the game on Heroic. The only real parts that gave me any sort of trouble were the boss fights as well as the hunters, which probably deserve their own strategy video. But really, you don't need to spend that much time in the open world upgrading your weapons or your suit to beat the game. I beat the game only doing maybe one or two forward operating bases, probably only about half an hour of open world activities, and as I said, Heroic was not too difficult. All of the major upgrades to your suit, including the three pieces of equipment you'll get, plus a shield module which allows you to give extra protection to yourself, are put right in front of you and I don't even think you could skip them if you wanted to. Additionally, as long as you're somewhat observant while you're going through the open world in the linear missions, you'll run across the Spartan cores. Those are the things that are needed to upgrade your suit, and the way it works is that one upgrade costs one core, two, two, etc, etc. I think there are four or five levels in total. What I would recommend is fully maxing out your shields and getting the two upgrades on the grapple shot which allow it to fire faster and electrocute your enemies. Those two are very useful, otherwise I think you'll be fine. Those are the five things that I wish I had known before playing Halo Infinite. I got a few other tips I guess. For one, don't discount the Mangler or the Shock rifle. They're both very, very useful. The shock rifle is amazing against sentinels. What I was doing to conserve ammo is I was waiting until they got close together. I was hitting them with the shock rifle. Then I was pulling out my secondary weapon, either my BR or say a mangler, and just going to town. It can also be good to have two weapons with different ammo types. Usually ammo canisters are pretty common, but you'll sometimes not be able to refill both of your guns completely if they use the same ammo type. Another tip I'd say is that there are grunts with shields in this game. They're pretty tough they take a lot of damage, so watch out for that. Also, there are brute chieftains who manage to use that plasma weapon, I don't even know what it's called, the one that's kind of useful, in a surprisingly useful way. They arc it almost like a mortar. That will kill you, as will any of the brutes using the heavy weapons. But guys, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.